Hey guys, I'm in the Natahala uh, National Forest today, um, getting out here doing a, a, as cliche as it sounds, a recce, um, a site survey for areas for an upcoming get together um, in the next couple weeks. So I came out here on my own, went up and down this, it's not a logging road, but I went up and down this way and a ways back a couple miles away, a different spot. So that's what I was doing today out here. Um, and I brought with me, because I wanted to make this video once I was done with my, my hikes and my you know, little reckeys, I brought with me um, my South African uniforms and camouflages because I don't think anybody's made up a video of the the differences in South the South African um, like Nutria Browns and the South African recce camouflages. So that's why I am that's why I'm making my video on today. Sponsors and affiliates of today's video are I want to I I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right right because I've never heard someone actually say it out loud. Krushinki Company. So they've provided one of the Nutria Brown items for today's video, one of the shirts that they have on their website. They have pretty big sizes too, which is awesome. Brand new in the packaging. So to Krushinki, the commando store with a K, Good Camo, Brownells, and others, all the links to some of them. Don't have codes with a few of them yet, but maybe. Um, all the links to their affiliate codes and whatnot on the link tree in my bio on Bush underscore flat on Instagram. So thank you to all of them, particularly Krushinki because Krushinki, Krushinki Co. Because they sent me the Nutria Brown shirts, so and now I have a full Nutria Brown set, and I can um, I can make this video today. So thank you. All right, so let's get into. We'll start from oldest to oldest to I guess newest in in a sense. Um, first item is going to be. This Nutria Brown flap cap, okay? It has a small flap built in on the back. This was given to me by um, a friend in South Africa. He, uh, he told me those weren't made very long and they were specifically, they were generally given to um, paras, part of the parachute battalion, the parabats, and engineers. Don't know why, but this is from this is from, he said, to Earl, like 81, 80 or 81. So it was brand new when he, I got it. Um, so this is from 19, 1980, 81. So I have that. Then I have my Nutria Brown pants. Let's see. Lay them down like that. Nutria Brown pants with the label Protea clothing, 1987. So this was a couple years. This was made. A couple years <clears throat> after, or few actually a few years after the cap was made, and you can tell this material has a, you can well you can also feel it, but this material has what seems to be more maybe a polyester blend in, which is interesting. Maybe they were trying that earlier on. I know that polyester blends do get warm in the sun, so because because this. Um, that ha it's a poly blend, but it's not as like thick as this. So you've got, you've got this thicker one, 80, 81, pants, 87. And then right here, I already opened, <coughs> I already opened the bag, but right here, this is from Krushenki Co., right? This is a 19... Let me show you. Let's see if we can show it to you. 1991 dated. So this is three years. This is three years before the 94 change in government and whatnot. So this it, this is three years before the change in government. Four years after the um, after this is made, and it seems because I've heard conflicting stories that um later on the material got uh, got thicker again kind of like that hat but it seems like let's see are the buttons are the buttons the exact same i 
the buttons. Uh, the 91 buttons on the shirt feel a little thicker, like a little thicker, thicker, thicker plastic. Um, but it seems like those two are, even has this here, look, in English and Afrikaans. Okay, so that's the Nutria Browns. Um, the older material in the cap of 8081 is a little thicker. It seems like there's more polyester in the blend. Pants are very, they're, they're lightly used. They still had, um, they're, they're lightly used. So they're, they feel a little soft, but they, they feel, the, the shirt and the pants feel the same. So the four year difference, it's not any heavier, but the, the cap does feel like a heavier material. So I'm assuming that's because before 80, like 79, 80, they weren't using Nutria Brown. They were using like khaki uniforms in the 70s. So in the mid, early mid 70s. So they were obviously, they were probably experimenting with different things. So the next camouflage I'll do is I'm going to go through my recce camouflages that I have. And we'll, we'll go through them kind of quickly. I have a couple. I have more than... I have more than I should. <laughs> so this is um, a South African recce stretch tarn copy shirt, extra size extra large, with the original paperboard tag telling you the A, A B, and type D. Type D is the type of camouflage um, that that it is. So the recce's. Supposedly, I haven't seen the full list. You'll see the different numbers with the the different letters with the items I have. But I have heard that they liter the Reckies had almost A to Z with their number codes. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. I have never seen the list. I don't know where that list would be. Um, this material is all kind of like the East German, the actual East German material. It seems to be a little thicker. It does have this shoulder pocket, which is indicative of it, of it being a South African copy. Um, size extra large. So how, how do I put this? Extra large camis. These, this is original, right? It's got the paperboard. This is original recce copy. Extra large camis are very hard to find in African camouflages in general, but the South African copy camouflages, because most of those guys, they, a, lot, some, a lot of them were tall, but most of those guys were like thin, wiry African dudes. So, you know, the extra larges weren't necessarily as ma made as much as small, medium, or larges. And so the dudes that were extra large used them, right? So there's not a lot of stockpile left of them. Um, and these paperboards, I've, I've worn each of these items a few times, but these, I mean, these are brand new with their paper, with the original paperboard tags, because these paperboard tags are designed to pull off. The whole point of these was to be able to plausible deniability. That's why the South African Reckies copied all their enemy camouflages. Supposedly, they also had a copy of U.S. Woodland. It was more like an ERDL. They also had a copy of the British DPM at the time, late 80s, early 90s. Um, what's another one? Did they have a copy? I, I heard that they might have had a copy of a desert camouflage. Um, so they, you know, they had, they had a plethora of them. Like I said, A to Z, A to Z maybe. Um, but like I, I have never seen that list. I've just heard about it from multiple people. This is the recce copy, um, uh, Portuguese lizard. Now this material on this is... It's a lot thinner, so it's a lot, th it's, how do I put this? It's thinner, but it's stiffer than the original Portuguese material because it's like a, th it's a thinner, it's new, but it's a thinner herringbone twill, HBT. The original Portuguese M64 lizard camouflage was this thick materials. I'm assuming the South Africans made this the way they did because they wanted it uh, to be to be lighter weight. Um, you can see that this is copy R. So we're, Portuguese lizard is R on the alphabetical list. Uh, Stritch tarn is D. I do not know what the AB stands for. I think it stands for the 
the item of clothing because like this is more of a jacket and less of a field shirt. So there's A, B, type D. This is copy R, type R. Then the next one I have is the recce copy of recce copy of the Tanzanian DPM. This is a very thin shirt. It's got that South African small shoulder pocket on it. Okay, we got the Tanzanian DPM. This is in extra large. A B type E size extra large. So that's the Tanzanian DPM top. So that's the three extra large tops. The Portuguese is actually really tight on like my shoulders and biceps. Like it's just it just is. It's not totally uncomfortable, but I definitely wouldn't want to wear it if I was like using them in the field. Um the the Tanzanian DPM shirt is really thin. Uh, I would be afraid of snagging it on thorns and maybe even tearing it. Uh, and then the the stretch tarn top is just it's thick. It's not cumbersome, but it's just thick. Um, so then here is the last piece of recce copy camouflage. Um, this is my pair of. Egyptian vertical lizard recce copy camouflage trousers. Uh, I'm gonna see it. So it did. It, ne it they were brand new. They never had the the copy tag on it. All these pants had on them, right there. It's very faded. There you go. Forty two, thirty two, thirty two or thirty four. Forty two, thirty four. Forty. Come on. There we go. Forty two, thirty four. So that's that's its size, but this never had, um, this never had the pay, any 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 little tag or little tag or paperboard tag. And from my my research and talking to other people who have these in their collection, the for some reason these didn't have those tags on them. They just literally had in like pen the sizes written on them. These out of my ca copy camouflages, I've worn these the most. I've destroyed the crotch because they are high waisted but there is no room to stretch with them. So I've split the crotch more than once. So um, I've got that. And then sliding down a rock um, in Gila National Forest in New Mexico toward the bottom of them. So I haven't been, I, the, for me, these camis, the, those, those Egyptian lizards um, are almost like uh, admin. I would wear that for like garrison kind of setting, if that makes sense, or just can't have a, camping like not moving around right bivouacking i wouldn't i wouldn't want to use those like for some serious hiking um my my crown my my pride and glory my crown jewel of my my uh collection is my okay so th my buddy from south africa he had an old recce cuban elm leaf copy shirt that that was pretty beat up uh the shoulders were torn and he was able to have it turned into about half a dozen cuban elm leaf caps that camouflage right there that is my favorite camouflage in the entire world if i could get a company to repro that i'd buy half a dozen sets and that probably be the only camouflage i ever wear again that in its size 62 for my big old fucking gourd um it th this is this is my prize piece of the collection. So it's it is made from an original recce copy shirt. It's just not an original recce copy cap because the reccees did make copy caps of most camouflage. Um, this this is kind of a, a um, what's what's the phrase? An honorable mention. This is a Rod Rhodesian brushstroke original like. 7980 brush stroke air text material. Um, my buddy in South Africa had just the material laying around, so he had these made up. And this this kind of this kind of design mirrors the kind of designs the recce copy caps were. So I have that. And then this is a Botswana and DPM Botswana and DPM cap. 
Uh, I got that short, that that typical African short brim. So I've got that cap as well. All right. Now we're going to move on into the more modern age. Um, we started with the Nutria Brown. All of these were made mid to late 80s. It's when these were in full swing, full use. All of these were made mid to late 80s. The next thing, I'm going to open this brand new. This is from, this is from, uh, this is for, this is Sarah's, but this is from Good Camo. He has a bunch of these in stock, had, I don't know how many he has left. This is a brand new Botswanan, or no, no, it's Bo, I'm going to fucking up, fuck up pronouncing it. Bo Puthwana. It was one of the South African homelands. This is a brand new, size small, made in 1993. Has that same type of printing on the collar that the Nutria Brown, the brand new Nutria Brown shirt had. This is a, check this out. When they fold them, they folded them into the epaulets. Hold on. They folded them into the epaulets. There we go. Brand new, Boputhwana. So it is South African by way of homeland. Check out those cool Bakelite buttons. This is brand new. This is for Sarah. And that's just a different variation of fucking DPM because there's a million of them. Boputhwana. And that's Botswana. And you can't tell the difference, really tell the difference. They both kind of use the same one. I, in my opinion, the Botswana DPM has some bigger strokes of color. You can kind of tell how the both Puthwana, Bo Puthwana has, uh, has like smaller browns and greens. So we got that. And then the final bits are, this is a, uh, a set of S2000, so post 1994, S2000, this was made in 1999, S2000 camis. These are Sarah's. They're in her size. So we've got the pant, uh, the, the blouse and the pants. One of my favorite things after 94, they made it illegal for citizens to own the, the government's clothing. And so all the S2000 items have this on it. State property, not for sale. So that's Sarah's set of S2000s. And then this is my personal, this was made in 2000. State property not for sale. This is my personal S2000 bush hat with the built-in day glow panel on the inside. And that is, there you go. There you go. That is my full layout of South African uniforms and camouflages starting from about 1980 all the way up until 19, uh, all the way up until 2000 with the cap. So there you go. A little longer winded than I wanted it to be, um, but I, I, nobody goes. Nobody. I haven't seen a video of anybody going over these. So, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that.